Good evening, Canterbury. I'm Mike Yardley. Welcome to Newsmakers, where we debate the week through Canterbury eyes. It's a pleasure to introduce our panel, City Council candidate for Banks Peninsula, Dennis O'Rourke, Health Board member Joe Kane, and from Lane Neve Law, Alec Neal. Thank you very much for joining us. Welcome. Mike. Well, of course, nominations have closed for the local body elections, and aside from the Christchurch mayoralty, the ward battles offer plenty of intrigue. One thing is certain, we are going to be electing at least two new city councillors, uh, with the exit of Norm Withers and Gail Sheriff. Dennis O'Rourke is taking aim at Banks Peninsula, as he seeks to return to the city council under the better governance umbrella. Before I come to the wider panel, why are you getting back into the city race? There are two reasons really. I'm standing for better governance because that's what the City Council needs. There's been too much irresponsible spending, a lot of rubber stamping, too many bailouts, too many secrets, and I just think that they need better governance structures and to do a better job and to do it openly. I'm also standing for uh, Banks Peninsula because I think that it's been ignored by the city. It's a tourist gem. It needs access to the waterfront. We need that damn marina finally got underway, uh, we need to create a tourist circuit for Banks Peninsula and that means widening and sealing some roads, creating some public laybys and you know rest areas, improving the whole thing and encouraging people to go there. I don't know why we don't use Banks Peninsula more, it's the gem of Christchurch for tourism. Let's get into it. God, he's in campaign mode already, Gosh, isn't I, he? I this, <laughs> advert <laughs> this advertisement was uh, approved by Bill Smith. Uh. <laughs> now, and I have um, to... I vote have, for me. I, well, I have to tell the audience, the shock news, I don't know if you heard the midday news today, Alec Neal is contesting the Christchurch mayoralty. Alec, why did you leave the surprise for the last minute? <laughs> I want to make a public statement. <laughs> I, Alexander George Neal, hereby confirm that I have retired from central and local body politics <laughs> and will not be seeking election either in this election or any other election. Well, actually, can I ask you about the state of the mayoralty? We will come back to the ward battles in due course. Um, do you think, to all intents and purposes, we've got a two-horse race? Is that it? Oh, absolutely. I, I personally am of that view. I'm sad that there is not a third candidate that uh, yeah, yeah. could gain uh, the support of others. Mm. And I say that because really it is uh, Bob on the right and um, um, what's his name again? James. Uh, oh, tell it, Jim. 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 Jim, please. Uh, Jim on the left and that's the choice that the community's got. Um, I had always hoped that there might be through the middle um, a acceptable mm. candidate um, that could just help um, the whole campaign. It'll be a dead campaign. Yeah, I, I, I actually think that the campaign, I, I think that that runs the risk actually of having a low voter turnout in the mayoralty because there are some that will absolutely not vote for Bob and some that will <coughs> absolutely not vote for Jim and, and whether they'll tick some of those other boxes or not, not sure but I know I, you know I know that when you said you discuss the lay of the land and one of the things about when you get sacked Michael is that you can listen to talk back radio and I guess what I'm missing out of this campaign as I look at all oh, the billboards and everything else, is that if people are having a problem with Bob they should be looking at the rest of the council the rest of the mm. council that supported him I actually think this is missing from this it is absolutely untenable that we're focusing on the mayor one vote when you do not and if everyone has the problems with everything that's gone wrong you must be looking at the new candidates okay can I open that up uh, for some discussion in terms of the standard of our current councillors how would you rate them? Well, look, unfortunately, I don't think it's very good. And that's the reason why we have achieved a poor governance standard in Christchurch City. And you only have to look around and see uh, some of the candidates. They really aren't, you know, projecting themselves. They're not taking part openly in, in discussion. I actually also don't think that they've, they've got governance structures set up within the City Council yeah. anymore. They don't have standing committees. They don't scrutinise things. They sanitise their debates by going behind closed doors yeah. in seminars. Not like us. They have their discussion. Not like us, dirty washing. Not like us. Not like us, the dirty washing well, was all wrong, over the place. What's wrong with a bit of rough and tumble <laughs> in debate where people can hear what people really think and people, you know, let fly a bit and, and, and their opinions get out there and they're challenged and they yep. respond. Yep. And that's what standing committees do. They scrutinise, they throw things about, they sift things out and then things that survive that can go on to the council and be debated. 
debated again in public. All this seminar stuff <laughs> and secret decision making, and you can't get the, you can't get copies called, of things. It's called spoon feeding. It's yeah. co and it's, rubber stamping what is. is what spoon it's called feeding. as well. Mike, you know, Mike, it's not I'm, good enough. Mike, Mike I'm not standing know? for elected office. I won't take much of the time today because uh, <laughs> I want to give it to these candidates. But one of the concerns <clears> I have, and I've got no proof of this, but it seemed to me, and it's reading the newspapers that the um, directorships that go with being a councillor mm. um, affect uh, those councillors in how they deal with the mayor of the time. Now, whether the mayor does or doesn't have an influence of who becomes a director and of which company, but to me it seems that those who have directorships are very reluctant to release those directorships and actually challenge the mayor uh, um, mm. on some of the decisions that are being made mm. because they don't want to lose favour either in the, this council training or the next. Yeah, can, I, can I get a quick comment from you about this directorships debate? I mean, obviously it was in place when you were last at the City yeah. Council. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should it be reviewed? I think it, I think it should be reviewed. I think that perhaps councillors get directorships a little bit too easily. Um, almost as though it's a matter of right. There is a policy there, and I'm sure it's still there, which, which um, councillors have to show that they have the, uh, you know, the aptitudes and the skills necessary. However, I think that needs to be reviewed and tightened up. I, I do think there's a bit of a difference between Christchurch City Holdings Limited and the other companies. I do think you need some councillors on Christchurch City Holdings Limited because that oversees yeah, all of the council companies. But I think when it comes to the airport company, the port company, the red bus and so on, yeah. you need people with particular expertise in those companies and that's what uh, the council needs to target. If there are councillors who've got that expertise, fine, but if they haven't, go out to the market and get the best people. Should a serving city councillor, if they are a director of a council-owned company, be paid director's fees in addition to their base council salary? Look, I, I, um, I do think that you have to do that. And the reason for that is that, after all, if the councillor wasn't a director, someone else would be and the same money would be paid. Mm. But that's not the point. The point is when you're a director, you actually take personal liability, liability. and responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. And you also, if you do the job well, have to do a tremendous amount of reading and a tremendous amount of work uh, if you do the job well and, and aren't just you know, warming a seat. Mm. And if that's the case, and it should be, then I wouldn't have a problem with people being paid for what they do and the responsibility they take. And isn't that part take. of it? Don't you think a bit of scrutiny needs to go around? that I, I personally believe, once I actually had a look at um, the responsibilities of some of those councillors, have to those holdings, to, to those directorships. I'm asking, actually, how are they, how are they doing both jobs? That, that the scrutiny and the understanding they need to keep their eye on the ball at, the, at their own table, the city council table, as well as the other. And that's where I think there possibly could be a problem. I, 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 don't believe, I don't believe they should be directors of other companies. They may be very much on uh, Christchurch City Holdings. Yes, mm. I'll accept that. Mm. But it, with the other companies, no. And they should be uh, independent yeah, directors. Exactly. And therefore, they then have, as councillors, the ability to uh, critically examine those companies and make sure that uh, in a governance uh, uh, view uh, that those companies are performing correctly. All right. Because we'll they do it through, through the statement of intent. The council still, it comes back to them as to what the council wants to see those companies um, as, a, as a CCO, council yep. controlled organisation. They get to um, have another crack at that at the table. Okay. We'll take a break. Uh, plenty more to come with our guests. Do stay with us.